you've had a lot of challenges and a lot of setbacks and and hurdles that you've you've had to really ride out and you know one of them relating to you know how you're treating your own physical body because of course you you've always had to exert yourself in that way to to be the best and to be at the top and to train all day every day but up until a point when then also food came into the equation where you'd mm-hmm. had someone who you work with make a comment about your weight and that led to you having disordered eating for a period of time um, as a reaction yeah. to that and that became an anxiety and a worry for you. Was there any particular moment or thought process that helped you heal and, and move out of that era? You know, <clears throat> I was 17 years old when our performance director first told me that, well, he said I was fat. And like my vision of what fat was, was never something that I, like I'd never considered myself to be someone who was fat and someone that wasn't in the best shape physically. And I'd never, also growing up, I could just get away with eating whatever I wanted to. And I, all of a sudden, looked at my body in a completely different way. And I became obsessed over losing weight, being as light as possible, but then not necessarily having the education to understand what being light meant. Like, there's a whole different thing about what muscle mass versus fat mass and all of these things and create it. And I put my body through hell after that moment. Like I was not eating enough. And then I was under, I was, I was, wasn't fueling myself properly. So then I didn't have the energy. And then all I was doing was craving things. And then I would binge. And that was when my spout with bulimia started coming in because I would binge and then I'd feel guilty and then I'd want to get rid of it. And it was this ongoing battle for me. And I ended up losing I think it was like 10 kilos, which is like 22 pounds in a space of six months before the Olympics in 2012. And I, I mean, I really struggled with body image ever since then. And I still now find it really difficult to not train a lot and to not, you know, to eat certain things. It's, it's just been something that's like, as soon as somebody says a comment like that, it can stick in your head in like a way that you can't let, get rid of it. And it's only been in the last year with, proper nutrition advice and education and support that I've been able to learn what's best for my body and to not hurt it. And again, be kind to myself and be able to allow myself to be properly fueled and be kind to my body to allow myself to be kind to my mind. And, you know, because food doesn't just fuel your body, it fuels your mind, it fuels your brain. It's, it's the reason that we're able to carry on doing so many things. So again, with that education, I really allow myself to get to the place where I am with my diving. And I think that's another reason why I was able to heal well after my surgery is because of the nutrition advice that I got and the things that I needed to do in order to get me back where I needed to be. Self-compassion is really the root of um, so many solutions for so many different problems. And, you know, I know it because it's something that I try desperately to cultivate so often. And, you know, I, I had a big period, I had about 10 years of bulimia on off and I now look back and I can see that it was a huge lack of self-worth. It was a huge bout of self-punishment. And we don't often think that self-compassion is going to be the cure for these things, a solution for these things. We're trying to look for something very practical. How will I get myself out of this cycle I'm in? But if we Mm -hmm. can really root back to self-compassion, it sort of sorts itself out. You know, like you said, with the help of understanding nutrition better and, and having an education around it but self-compassion is where it's at it it really is and it's we I don't think we put enough focus on it I think we're we're still looking for um I don't know some exterior applause yeah, so external ex- gratification yeah. isn't it of like just being able to someone said just being like you're doing great you're doing great yeah. when actually you can you can look in the mirror and tell yourself you're doing great we have to you, you survive. Yeah, like you survived another day. Good for you. Like you have gotten through today and there are so many challenges in today's world that life is hard. And, you know, just getting through the day in whatever way that is for you. And I think during lockdown, I think allow people to be, see other people being extremely motivated and doing lots of things. And actually it was okay to deal with that lockdown and getting through it whatever way that you could and not to be too hard on yourself if you weren't this super productive person. You know, it's 
like I said, all of these challenges come in ebbs and flows. But again, being kind to yourself, having that self-compassion and being like, you know, you're doing good and, and understanding that you're going to have bad days and things aren't always going to be perfect and things aren't going to go really well. But on the days that it doesn't go the way you want it to, to not beat yourself up about it and know that you can get back on track at some other point. And it may be within an hour, it may be within a few days, a week, month, a year, whatever it is, you will get back on track. You're so right. I think we're all we're all waiting for someone to come and give us a pat on the back. I, I know this to be true of myself. Like, say there's been a busy day, like, even today, sort of juggling the whole thing of, you know, getting the kids ready for school and then had a couple of meetings online and then put a load of washing in and prepping for yeah. today and, and whatnot. And sometimes I think, come on, someone tell me I'm doing all right. And then doing I forget. Good. Yeah, exactly. I, I have to, I need to do that. I need to stop and go, oh, yeah, you know what? I'm doing all right today. Yeah, there's yeah. the cats kicked the fucking litter out the tray again and, you know, the house is a bit of a shithole, but whatever, I'm doing all right. Like, we forget we yeah. can do that for ourselves. What is wrong with us? Absolutely. It's, I think, you know, probably social media doesn't help because that is quite literally a platform for us to get outside gratification and applause and yeah. all of that stuff and validation. And we need to kind of remember that we've also got to back that up with us doing it for ourselves. It's an inside job. 